Greetings and welcome to the sixth episode of Modern Modern Manners. And as always, I'm your host, Doc Elf Guy. And today we have three very random and very different house mods for you. Though they're all on, you know, the sort of smaller side. There's no large mansions or grand abodes in this episode. But, you know, regardless, uh, these are still some, you know, pretty interesting and certainly unique homes for you to check out. And as always, you can find the download links for all mods shown down in the video description below. So let's get things started with our first house mod, which this time around is Heroes Hovel Light by Kogar. And uh, this mod, uh, you know, starts a bit, well, differently than most, I would say. Uh, basically, you'll find a particularly aggressive mud crab near the lighthouse in Cedanin that appears to be carrying a letter of some sort and a corpse of some wealthy looking individual nearby. And of course, nearly all the stuff this fellow is carrying is fake. And there's a journal on a nearby rowboat with a rather, you know, humorous background story of why this fellow was here in the first place. Evidently, he's some sort of hero looking to purchase property on Vodenfell, uh, you know, before he met his bad end with a mud crab. And uh, in any event, this will take you to a realtor's office in Cedanine, and yes, this will conflict with a lot of the Cedanine overhauls out there, in case you are wondering. And uh, heading inside, you'll find a, well, a sort of unusual looking fellow manning the counter, and he'll try to sell you, an, uh, as he calls it, an investment property, just west of Hla Oud. Of course, if you have a particular letter with you, you can, you know, just straight up ask him to uh, buy Hero's Hovel. Uh, for a mere 2300 drakes or so, I believe, and uh, after a lengthy, you know, sort of comedic exchange of dialogue, of course, and there's, you know, really a lot of humor involved in trying to get this home, at least it seems that way from my perspective, and uh, once you've uh, finally got the deed and key to Hero's Hovel in hand, you'll find this abode uh, just down the road from Sudanin, really, outside of uh, Vivek, and it has a rather grand outside appearance of, you know, tall gates, towers, and a courtyard, and those gates, by the way, actually do work, so you can, you know, draw them up and uh, leave them down to prevent invaders from getting inside your home. And there's also a small backyard with a, uh, you know, sort of deck overlooking the ocean. A perfect place to sit back and relax as the sun sets in the west. And you also find that the entire exterior of the home is colourfully lit as well, with, you know, purple, blue and orange lights making for a really cool looking abode at night time. And uh, despite the grand outside appearance of this abode, this home does actually live up to its name, as inside it's really little more than a hovel. It has a lot of the basic amenities you might expect, like you no know, ample storage, and all the containers in this abode are unique with a high encumbrance rating, so they can hold, you know, far more than normal containers could. And on the incredibly small second floor, there's a bit of a, uh, you know, sort of display space that you can use. And of course, the heart of the house is a master bedroom with a uh, few more tables and chests. And uh, there's also a, a cliff racer killing weapon of some sort. Though the largest room in this abode is actually below the house. And that's a massive display chamber that's uh, rather uniquely decorated. Here you'll find dozens of armor display mannequins that you can use to show off armor and clothing, as well as dozens of display tables, and, you know, even with such a small house, it comes with a truly grand display hall that'll take you, you know, forever to fill up completely. Now, there are a few notes that I, you know, should probably uh, make here about this display hall. You'll notice a lot of, you know, Daedric weapons and armor used as decorations here, but uh, never fear, these are all static objects, so you can't actually pick them up, so the mod isn't all that overpowered or anything. And uh, overall, this is a small and quaint abode with a truly massive display hall and, you know, a fun little quest that you can do in order to get it with a decent bit of, you know, backstory going on. It does come with a lot of storage and display space, as well as a short commute to Vivek and a scenic ocean view, but otherwise it's pretty small and, you know, it's sort of ideal for the adventurer who wants something that looks grand without actually being all that large on the inside. Next up, we have Abandoned Treehouse by Stormwind, and this is another sort of, you know, well, kind of odd and unusual house. As the name would imply, this is basically a treehouse in the Bitter Chaos region, including a small docks down below, uh, towards the uh, base of the tree, and the tree itself seems to be a pretty tall and narrow custom tree from uh, maybe the Niddib project, or, you know, possibly one of Deathless's models. You know, I'm not entirely sure, but, you know, regardless, the house is a small round home that includes a wraparound balcony, and uh, something you might notice here, there's a lot of animated falling leaves raining down from the upper branches of the tree, which gives this house a sort of, uh, you know, scenic property. 
And the wraparound balcony includes a lot of stuff, actually, such as a small ingredient garden, some tables overlooking the sea, the occasional practice dummy. And although it is a bit odd-looking, it uh, really is all quite scenic, I would say. And there's just, you know, some amazing views of the ocean up here, and also the surrounding bit of coast region. And of course, to get up here, though, you're going to have to uh, climb up the trunk, which is a tall, rounded stairwell that leads up to the main house. And the first room you'll come across is a small, round sort of parlor, which is, you know, also sort of a small display hall, really, with shelves, a couple of tables, and a glass display case that you can use. And the rest of the house is divided off into several very small rooms, like a kitchen that includes a, you know, bit of dining space, and basically just enough room to move between the oven and the table, and not really a whole lot else. And there's also a small storage room with a few labeled containers, and I believe these may also be special containers that can hold more items than normal. And there's also an alchemy lab with a couple of shelves for storage and display, and a set of alchemical equipment, uh, nothing too fancy of course. This is a fairly balanced mod overall. Finally, there's a small and sort of sparse bedroom, but you know, it's still kind of cosily decorated, and here you'll find a bit of a background story to the place. Uh, not much, just enough to establish the house's existence in the game world. And there's also a teleport ring that can uh, take you back to your treehouse at any time. And all in all, uh, Abandoned Treehouse is a fairly simple themed home with a unique appearance and some stunning views of the ocean. It doesn't really offer a whole lot of space, but it does have a small bit of storage and display space, not to mention a teleport ring that uh, makes up for the otherwise modestly long commute to Cedarneen, since you can just use this ring to teleport between Cedarneen and your treehouse home at any time. And if you're looking for a simple sort of treehouse to call home, this is certainly a good option to try out. And uh, finally, we have Cozy House by Phaedra, and this is a pretty simple and small home located on the outskirts of Plesiad, as you can see here, and it's basically just a small Nordic-style house on the exterior, and, you know, fair warning, this is a conflict-heavy location, there's about 10 other house mods, and quest mods, and, you know, other related mods that use this exact spot. Inside, you'll find a cozy and charming abode that, although, you know, being on the small side, is really just nicely decorated and offers some, you know, warm comforts for the weary traveller. And the entry hall here consists of a lounge by a roaring fireplace, a dining room table, and of course, tons of booze and flowers to liven up the place. And uh, often in one of the side rooms, you'll find a study and alchemy lab, which includes a number of potted plants that you can use to harvest ingredients, some basic alchemical equipment, again, nothing too overpowered, as well as some storage. And one of the cool features of this house mod is that it comes with a set of books with detailed information about how to make each type of potion, as well as books that outline all the magical effects that each ingredient has. And uh, keep in mind that this may be considered a tad bit unbalancing, since normally you do have to, you know, kind of raise your chemical skill to figure this stuff out. But anyway, the last room we're going to be looking at here, though keep in mind this house actually includes a couple of rooms that we won't be looking at in this video, such as a smaller storage room and the like. And uh, this last room here is the master bedroom, which is, you know, cozily finished with a single bed, some storage and closet space, another roaring fireplace, and a few chairs to take in the fire with and enjoy a nice cup of flynn. And overall, Cozy House isn't some big manor or feature complete abode, but it does live up to its name with a lot of cozy decorations and charm. It does come with a few features, like uh, ingredient and potion books, that'll be of great help for when you're, you know, basically toiling away in your chemical lab. And it also has a short commute into town, being basically in Plesiad already, but at a cost of being, you know, fairly conflict prone with uh, other mods in the region. And uh, either way, if you want a simple and cozy abode to call your own, you might want to check this one out. And that's all we have for this week. Uh, we'll have another episode of Morrow and Modding Manus in about two weeks' time. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later with our next batch of mods.